Well, mergers and acquisitions booming so far this year, and we are joined this hour by Gary Parr. He is vice chairman at Lazard. It is the biggest non-banking merger advisor. Gary, formerly co-headed global mergers and acquisitions at Morgan Stanley, and he is with us, as I said, for this whole hour to discuss M&A. What else? Well, we actually do have a lot of other things to talk about, things. but thanks for coming in, Gary. Good morning, Deidre. Thanks. So $190 billion worth of deals being announced in August alone. I mean, this strikes us as really being a hot month. Yes. Yet we've looked at some statistics. It doesn't necessarily mean this is the way that things go for the next year. How do you see it? Exactly right. No, this is a lumpy business and activity. So many mergers are planned months in advance or the announcements. So you can't read a lot into any one month. But the fact that the trend tends to be moving upward is consistent with what we see. And that is there are some fundamental reasons why companies and CEOs are beginning to think more about mergers. And what would that be? Just cash on balance sheets or, or fear or a combination well, of Well, actually, you touched on the two most meaningful points, confidence, the level of confidence for boards and CEOs. And the other is cash, um, makes a big difference. Um, notably, spending a moment on cash is not only just having it to spend, but the fact that it was an insurance policy and a financial crisis. It was protection. Now people are more confident they don't need as much protection, and the earnings on that asset are near zero. Because obviously it's a risk to go through a merger or an acquisition, but at some point it also becomes a risk to just be sitting on cash. On, on an asset earning nothing. So another choice if someone's really, if they lack confidence about mergers, they could buy in their own stock. There are options, but there aren't many options as to how to deploy the cash. Or payout dividends, I suppose. But do you make anything of this idea that with 3PAR, for example, we've seen Dell and HP competing. We're speaking a lot this morning about BHP Billiton and the fact that there may be quite a few bidders out there for potash. I mean, it's a story that's still developing. Do you see this as a positive sign that it seems like there are many suitors who are willing to actually get money on the table? Yeah, I think the, con the combination of confidence and cash and in certain sectors that comes together. So for example, te the technology sector, CEOs and managements are more confident. They weren't as badly hurt by the financial crisis and spending on their products has been more consistent than say some other more volatile or more capital intensive industries. So with that confidence comes a, a, a desire and a, a reason to move forward. The same is true in some regions, Asia where the economy is held up well. It's slowed, but it's still positive. And so merger activity as a percentage of overall global M&A activities at a record level. So if you had to take a look at the areas, and I just heard you say tech sort of less mm -hmm. hurt than other fields right. through this credit crisis, is that going to be the hottest area for M&A for the next year? It's one of the areas. Look for sectors that aren't as capital intensive, that were not as adversely affected. So certainly technology field, broadly defined, is is one sector. Consumer products is another uh, sector where, again, we've seen some number level of activity not as adversely affected, whereas some other industries, very capital intensive, uh, are still recovering. What do you think about hurt industries? You heard my colleague John Ehrlichman and sort of the Pac-Man house uh, right. eating a lot of the home builders. I mean, obviously, this is one of the hardest hit, if not the hardest hit group. Right. Uh, do you see that as ripe for consolidation? Hard to say, uh, because it's an area, again, of high degree of uncertainty. Uh, the one reason they might consider mergers, he, he touched on, alluded to, cost savings. When you're concerned that your industry may not grow much or is saturated and there are too many competitors, then you turn to cost savings, which might be good for the company, for the stockholders, may not be very good for the overall economy because it goes right back into the unemployment issue, but that's an economic issue. Uh, I heard you say Asia obviously is really yeah. ripe for a lot of activity. We've also seen uh, some brewing as well, even in Europe, despite the fact that uh, many yeah. people are indicating a slowdown there. Mm -hmm. If you had to rank them, is Asia first, then emerging markets, then Europe, and then the U.S.? How does it all fit in? It, um, well, if one, the U.S. is still the largest market in the world, uh, so it's going to represent a meaningful percentage. But in terms of change, Asia is uh, at record levels. It's um, in financial services, for example, it's 25 percent of merger activity this year. Um, and Europe representing a higher percentage than it has historically. 